Okay, so my friend Jackie asked me for um, some wall art that she could put on her wall, but she wanted it like really dark to kind of, like black if I could get it to, to match uh, stuff she already had on her wall. <clears throat> um, so I've tried staining wood before with, uh, you know, using this, this Lichtenberg and resin um, process, and I've had issues where the stain stains over the top of the resin and um, I have to sand a decent amount of it away to be able to re-expose the resin. So like, here's one right here where I tried to stain it with some espresso colored stain, um, but the resin there was all covered up too, so you didn't get to see all like the shimmer and you know what makes it look nice. And I had to sand it all off, and so now it's not as dark as it had been. Um, so I was trying to figure out what I could do to get the wood really dark without, you know, having to sand it all away. Um, and so I went onto a Facebook uh, woodworking page that I follow and I asked for advice there. And I had uh, Brad Nielsen and Rob Bashak um, suggest staining it with iron acetate. Uh, and then they explained the process to me. I went onto Wikipedia and uh, researched a little bit more to kind of um, just figure out how to do this and uh, to see if it would work. Um, so basically, rust and vinegar will have chemical reaction and uh, create um, you know, this, this new kind of liquid called iron acetate, which um, most people, me included, will use steel wool and just put it in the, the vinegar and it'll rust over the course of a couple days. Um, so that, uh, that iron acetate, when you brush it onto wood, it reacts with the tannins that occur in the wood. And um, let's see, this is where Wikipedia came in. So tannins are polyphenolic biomolecules that occur naturally in plants. Um, they're astringent. Um, people will, you know, they're one factor to help determine the ripeness of fruit. It's that kind of like dry puckery feeling you get inside your mouth uh, when you eat unripened fruit. That's because of a, a high tannin content in the fruit. Um, it's, I guess, understood that tannins are kind of like pesticides. Um, they help regulate plant growth and uh, they kind of also help um, keep other predators away from the plants, even the fruit and stuff like that. Um, so th those are the tannins. The iron acetate reacts with the tannins in the wood um, to create iron tannates, which are dark. So the general idea is like wood with higher tannin content will be stained darker. More tannins equal out to more iron tannates, which equal out to darker wood. The hope being that that will only stain the wood and it won't stain the resin that's inside so that I can still have a bright, you know, resin color that pops against a really dark wood without having to sand away the top layer of stained wood. Um, so, Brad and Rob suggested to me white oak, which is um, wood that's really high in tannins. And then I went and uh, through a little bit more research, I saw that you can prep the wood by painting it with black tea, just a, a really kind of strong concentration of black tea because black tea is also really high in tannins. So, um, the idea is take the black tea, really high concentration, paint it onto the wood, do a couple coats, whatever, Hi. leave a couple more tannins um, on the wood, and then after it dries, you can paint it with the iron acetate and uh, hopefully get a really dark stain. So Jackie's looking for as close to black as I can get. Um, I'm gonna try this process out and um, hopefully, you know, get really dark wood. So before working with the white oak, I have this piece of, I think it's cedar, I think it used to be part of a fence post maybe, but um, I stained that and uh, you know, it got dark. I had to sand a decent amount of it away just because the, the resin color wasn't really um, much of a contrast against that dark stain, so I did sand most of it away. Um, I'm hoping I can get it darker though with uh, white oak, so. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give that a shot and see how it turns out.
so you can see with the duct tape there, it kind of makes like a little cup or a bowl. It's really easy to overfill these things. You'd be surprised how little resin it takes to fill that in. So I've overfilled them quite a few times. So making that little kind of like pocket for the resin to sit in just helps it from spilling everywhere. Also, most of the time you don't have to duct tape all over the back of it. I'm using cheaper duct tape, so I am. I found if you don't get like the ultra strength duct tape, it'll like leak out of uh, the sides and out through the bottom and end up just sticking to whatever it's sitting on top of. Just then a huge pain in the butt. So I'm being a little bit more over cautious than I think I need to, especially with like one like this. You know, no cracks are going through all the way down to the bottom, so there's not really much chance of anything spilling down through, but I like to be careful. But then, if you look at one like this, where you can see it's got you know, a hole all the way down through, that thing goes through to the bottom, there's some cracks. That's one that's more likely to have a bunch seeping out through the bottom, so that's one that you probably do want to duct tape all the way around. Okay, here they are, all done. I think uh, they turned out pretty good. Yeah, so not bad for first time trying that staining. I like this one a lot. This is one of the ones I uh, tried to do. use more kind of like clear, or just barely tinted resin. You can see because of that, you can kind of see into the wood down through the bottom there. And I uh, left it all like frayed and kind of sharp inside, which I think looks pretty cool. So you can see the difference between a dark stain that I had to sand a bunch of it away to kind of uh, expose the resin and then the iron acetate stain, which I barely had to sand at all to uh, kind of re-expose that resin. And you can see the difference between my test piece here, which um, had this kind of like red resin in it, 
it didn't really pop and so I had to sand a decent amount of it again away to uh, make it so the resin didn't blend quite as much versus you know the lighter colored resin that really pops against that black. Okay this was a really fun uh, project for me. I really like you know trying out something new. This um, iron acetate stain, uh, you know, it, it definitely worked. It did what I wanted it to do. It stained the wood really dark without um, affecting the resin. And uh, you know, the, the camera and the lighting aren't the best here, but um, you know, it worked. And so it was a lot of fun to to learn this new skill. Have you know something else that I can kind of sit on and be ready to use in the future if I ever come across another reason to use it. Um, I have another friend who just asked for a uh, like a Northern Lights Aurora Borealis kind of looking thing using this dark stain as well. And so, you know, I can do that now. Um, I might make another video out of, uh, out of that process. I've got a couple ideas on what I want to do with that, but basically um, I'm glad Jackie asked for this and got me looking into it and trying to figure out how to make this happen. Um, so now I'm just gonna wrap them up and mail them off to her.